So we call it the GCF, the greatest common factor. And basically what it is, is it's the largest, it's the largest factor that is common to two numbers. And just like before with prime numbers, the definition will be really, really easy to understand once we do an example. So let's look at the GCF, the greatest common factor of the numbers 12 and 18. So basically what you have to do is you have to list the factors, which you all should know how to do by now. We've done it before. And then you find the biggest one of those factors that's common to both of these numbers, called the greatest common factor. Right? So what we do is we look at the number 12 and we list the factors. Right? One is a factor of 12 because it can divide into 12. Two is a factor. Three is a factor. Four is a factor. Six is a factor. 12 is a factor. Why are all of these factors? Because 1 times 12 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 3 is 12, 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 1 is 12. For instance, the number 5, which would sit here, 5 doesn't divide into 12, so it's not a factor. So these are all the factors of the number 12. Now, we need to go and list all of the factors of the number 18. So I'll write them down for you. The number 1, the number 2, the number 3, because 3 times 6 is 18, the number 6, because 6 times 3 is 18, the number 9, because 9 times 2 is 18, and the number 18, of course, it divides in also. But for instance, the number 15, 14, all these numbers that sit over here, you can't divide them in, so they're not factors. So what we've done is we've listed the factors of the number 12, we've listed the factors of the number 18, and now we have to find the largest or the greatest factor that are common to both of these guys. So what's it going to be? Well, it's going to be the number 6, and I'll just circle it for you here. The number 6 is common to both of them, and it's the greatest one. You see, the reason why it matters is because the number 1 is common to both of these. The number 2 is a common factor between both of these numbers. The number 3 is a common factor. It's a factor present in both lists. But the number 6 is the greatest common factor. It's the biggest factor common to both of them. So, what you say is the GCF is 6. All right? Now, I know it seems a little weird. Why would we do this? But it's because when we start factoring algebraic expressions, you have to do this a lot. And uh, it's just uh, something we'll get to when we get there, but that's why we practice it. All right, so let's go on and just do a couple more exa examples. What's the GCF of 21 and 49? So we have to go down in our list and we say, all right, the number 21, what are the factors of 21? 1, 3, 7, 21. Now I know I'm spitting these factors out really fast just because I have the problem solved. Really to do it you have to go number by number from 1 to 21 and figure out what's going to divide in here and you're going to find out that these are it. The number 6, the number 5, you know, any number that's not listed here will not divide into 21 evenly so it's not listed. But 3 times 7 is 21, 7 times 3 is 21 and so on so we list it here. Then we go and list the number 49. What are the factors of that? One. 7 and 49. Why? Because 7 times 7 is 49, and of course these two are always factors, but there's nothing else that works, so we have to find the greatest common factor. In fact, in this case, the only factor common is the number 7, so it also happens to be the greatest common factor, equals 7. So you would just list it just like that. All right, uh, we're just going to crank through a couple of additional problems. What if we wanted to find the GCF of 30 and 45, the greatest common factor of these two numbers. So let's write down the factors of the number 30. Very common number you see all the time. There's lots of factors. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, 30. I know I'm listing them really fast because I don't want to waste your time, but you would have to go through and just think to yourself, 1, 2, 3, 4. Is 4 a factor? Well, no, because... Uh, uh, because you can't multiply 4 times anything to give you 30. See, all of these guys, you know, 2 times 15 is 30, 3 times 10 is 30, 5 times 6 is 30, 6 times 5 is 30. You pick a number like 4 or a number like 7 or a number like 11 and you can't divide it in. So it's not a factor. So now we go back to the number 45. And we say, what are the factors of 45? One's a factor. 3 is a factor because 3 times 15 is 45. 5 is a factor. Right, 9 times 5 is 45. Then, of course, 9 is also a factor. 15 is a factor. 
and 45 as a factor. And we look in this list and we see, all right, 1 is a common factor, 3 is a common factor, 5 is a common factor. We keep on looking and we see 15 here. So we have the greatest common factor right here. This is the biggest number that's common to both of these lists. So you say the greatest common factor is equal to 15. All right, so it's really simple as that. We're just going to do one more to give you a little bit more practice, and we'll call it a day here. What if we're going to find the greatest common factor of 66 and 90? Now, these are weird numbers, so sometimes it might be nice to have a calculator to find the factors. These are the factors of 66. 1, 2, 3, 6, because 6 times 11. 11, because 11 times 6. 22 is a factor, right? 22 times 3. And then 33, because 33 times 2, and then 66. So those are the factors of 66. And then we have the number 90, which is a big number, so there's going to be a lot of factors. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 15, 18, 30, 45. 45 times 2 is 90. And then 90. So we have lots and lots of factors. This is a common factor. 2 is a common factor. 3 is a common factor. 6 is a common factor. And we start looking above that. 11 is not in this list. 22 is not in this list. 33 is not in this list. 66 is not in this list. So actually, the greatest common factor was this one, 6. So you say the greatest common factor is equal to 6. And that's the final answer. So that's how you find the greatest common factor in algebra. You have two numbers, you list their factors, and then you look for common factors that are common to both of them, and you find the biggest one. That's all it is. So make sure you understand how to do this. It's pretty simple. You're not going to be asked to do it all that much, but it's a very useful concept because when we get into algebraic expressions in just a little while, you will be basically doing this kind of thing in your head pretty, pretty regularly. Um, you won't need to make lists of numbers like this because you're going to get so good at it for, for very common expressions. But the concept is important, so make sure you understand that. Follow me on to the next section. We'll continue our journey through learning algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.